What's up, everyone? This is Soji Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 209, and we are recording on October 24th, 2022. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Anita. Hello. And as a quick reminder, check out Soji Talk on your favorite podcast platform, sub to us on YouTube, and join the Soji Talk Discord, and be a part of the nation. All right, no announcements and sponsors this week, but the big new releases is a little different than normal. So last week, we said that because this week uh, didn't have too many releases, we would reintroduce some of the songs from last week that didn't get covered, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We put the basically the four or five most popular ones that didn't get covered from last week, and we also put in all the new songs from this week. And who would have thought, but it turned out we're getting three songs from last week and one song from this week. Um, <laughs> the, the three songs from last week, it is Cheon solo debut with Hush Rush, Unbi's release with Underwater, and Akmu's Chan Hyuk, he had a solo debut with Panorama. The song from this week is Itzy's pre-release with Boys Like You. Surprisingly, though, Mamamoo lost twice in a row. It is surprising, yeah. Yeah. So if you were a Mumu and you are really ticked off, we were let, close. Our, let, let the Gochu mm. gang know that you are frustrated with them. <laughs> um, it was very close. It lost by one vote, mm. but it lost two weeks in a row. So or, what, what are we supposed to do? Or sign up to our Patreon where you can voice your democratic <laughs> vo- opinion. Yeah, I don't know if there was collusion to get some of these, but it is what it is. It is um, what it is. All right. The first song we're going to cover is Cheon's solo debut with Hush Rush. It came out on Wednesday, October 12th. She's from WM, debuted 2018 with Eyes One and now is a soloist. And she has 26 uh, music show wins while she was in Eyes One. Okay. Real quick, let's just be upfront. We had a very long conversation about this chart before we, we had. Began. Okay, okay. Uh, we I think the basis of this conversation uh, is as if you listen to last week's episode, you would know that Warren gave it first place in the Soju chart or uh, yes. Spice King, whatever you want to call that segment, right? Yes, I very it controversial first. take. Yes, uh, a I lot realize. of people were unhappy about that. Yes. Um, so that being said, it is from from him giving it first place last week. It's clear that he really likes this song, right? Because he gave it number one over like the La Seraphim track or the Solgi track or whatever track, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. On the flip side, yes, yes. Anita, well, I don't know about Anita, but I am not the biggest fan of this song for a, a plethora of reasons. Mm. Not so not. we had this we had this big discussion. It it didn't get heated, it got um it got animated. The discussion got animated. I was angry, I was crying, my tears were all over the floor. So, There's a so flood we, in my apartment. <laughs> Sorry. We had a we had a pre-discussion. I think we've come to a, a agree to disagree type setting, but we'll we'll kind of just lay that that conversation out. But I think you first need to defend why you like the song okay. because last week you voted it number one. Before we, mm-hmm. before I defend it, even let's define the song. What is this song? Because it's very different from a lot of K-pop we typically get, especially uh-huh. going through this podcast. Because mm. it's a very easy listening. Almost like very minimal pop track. The arrangement is very minimal. The there's not a lot going on at any given point. The word that I hear a lot with this song is that it's a little repetitive. Which I think you know what at, at the end at the end of the day I, I think it's a fair point, right? Um, there is I think one song one thing that this song does incredibly well is using the human voice as not only the main character of the song but as the voice or, or sorry the 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 instrument. Um, there are lots of parts in the chorus that's like using Cheon's voice or the random sampled voice in the background as as a great instrument. I think that's what really draws me to the song at the end of the day. And once you start paying attention to stuff like that, I feel like the chorus is really, really addictive. Maybe a bit, a little repetitive, but I think it's just a very well executed chop where I'm willing to listen to it over and over and over again and and not have... Uh, a, a boring time with it that's that's my takeaway with it and the changes happen when they need to happen to a point where like i feel like pacing itself is, is really you know finally done to you get to the bridge and it's like a very different mood all of a sudden albeit it's keeping the same tone that was in the rest of the song um i didn't like like the i didn't i wasn't a huge fan of the transition where like the very deep voice guy goes like and now for the breakdown. That, okay, that, that, that was yeah. weird. That's, that's that was telling, weird. not showing, and I don't like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm. I, Same. Uh, yeah. The only time that was okay was DJ put it back on when Tiffany <laughs> did it. That was okay. That was the only time it was allowed, right? Like, wasn't did, it there Jessica other... that did that? Was it Tiffany? It was Tiffany. Oh that's my Tiffany, god! Yeah. It's my, Tiffany. Yeah. Really, my well, childhood has changed. The 
the that break, right? I've heard it before. I can't I can't remember the the song, but it must have been from another yeah. production of them joints, right? Because this yep. is them. Yep. Which yep. was I thought was like super surprising because this is not what I associate with them joints. Oh yeah. As producers. Because like if you listen, if you think of them joints, you're thinking about like all the stuff he's done with NCT, right? Where he's like very yeah, much. I think it might have been an NCT song that I heard it from. I yeah. think uh, yeah, I think it was NCT too. I couldn't really track it down, but like if I think of them joints, I'm thinking about like hard hitting hip hop sounds that are like very trend forward. Mm. And to a degree, I'm getting the trend forwardness as well, and the same amount of like cat, like campy quirkiness that I get out of NCT really? songs. Mm. Um, and- I'll agree. There's there's some good camp in there. Yeah, I'll yeah. agree with this. And that's where I feel like the the uh, the the comparison that I've been making last week and this week as well is that it feels like a K-pop version of a Harry Styles track. Um, I think that's a good assessment. Yeah, it's whether you like that or not. That's I think that comes down to you. I think Harry Styles does have a lot of stuff under his belt that is like a very good interpretation of that, like indie bedroom pop sound that's a little more upbeat. And I feel like we're getting yes. the same thing mm-hmm. here, right? Um. I also recognize a lot of people don't like music for the sushi restaurant for very fair reasons, sounding very sterilely boring. So I kind of get that. But I think for me, where it stands out so well from a lot of other K-pop songs in this market, that's where it's gotten to me. You know, the same way New Jeans stood out to me so well. Don't you ever compare New Jeans to this, sir. You thought you don't knew you, this was coming. You, you knew ever, this was coming, though. Don't you ever compare New Jeans to okay, this. Okay, here's, here's the thing. I'm exa- I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit with New Jeans. I, I am. I am. I think New Jeans <laughs> pulled it off They're way better. Totally, but, totally different levels. But, but, but maybe the levels are different, but the direction... Well, okay, actually, I, that, that, I'll give you that. The I'll velocity, you, that. you know, this is, you know, yeah. Okay. I think my problems with this song. So, number one. Yes. Big Eyes One fan, right? You big are. Big Cheon fan. Mm-hmm. You are. Um, I think that my overall issue is, I think it's less to do with the actual song and more to do with how I'm interpreting what WM is doing with her career. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I okay. think the song mm-hmm. is fine. Um, I think that it was... Uh, it's not uh, safe is the wrong word, right? But I would say it's like it's a it's a easy listening song, which you know, easy listening sometimes comes off as like you know they just they just m- mailed it in, right? We right. just gave her a song that we knew she would sing because we know her vocal range; it's gonna work fine. And I would agree that you can listen to this a lot. I've been listening to this while I grind some FIFA games out. I listen to the playlist. This one, uh, that's what I do. I play with the FIFA on no commentary. I just listen to the songs for the week. And the, the problem is, at the beginning of the week, I have like one song that I have to listen to over and over again. And as the <laughs> week goes on, I add more of them to it. So this last is not week, a FIFA had, song, though. This last not, week, I listened to that Baba Boo song by itself for like a day. And it, oh my God, I listened to it like 50 Why times. Why would you do that to yourself? Well, that's how, that's how I get it in my head. Um, this is a mm-hmm. song that you would never just skip. It's fine. It's fine to listen to. Yeah. I, I think my bigger issues is that, like, for me, when they're doing her solo debut, I wanted them to do something that more points at the things she's typically known for, her, her dancing, her performance. I know there is dance yeah. components to this because I've seen the live stage, but they I didn't get to see it in the actual music video, which is a, a, how a lot of the general public will consume the song, right? Because I think the next level of K-pop is once you start watching live stages. Um... That being said, I think the song is okay. I think it. I think as uh, Warren mentioned, it it can be interpreted as a as a little repetitive. I did find it a little repetitive, and you know how Warren said that they put in a lot of the sound effects with her voices, right? I thought it was good in mm-hmm. some places, but other times it felt like to me they were just copy and pasting the same line she sang like ten plus times <laughs> in the song. On that day. Yeah, like something like that. I was like, oh my god, we're gonna we're gonna listen to this part again. Um. Overall, though, I, I don't have too... Like, I'm not too overly critical. I just thought it was aight, you know, um, yeah. in terms of the song itself. What I do have problems with was the way she ate that sandwich at 2.45 in the music what? video. What? If you look at 2.45 oh. in the music video, she's they're in Europe where they filmed this, I believe. It's Italy, it looks like, maybe Spain. Oh, I thought she it's eats Quebec. A, it's Quebec? This Quebec? is Quebec? <laughs> that kind of looks what? like okay. Quebec. Does, doesn't it? Does it not? Well, I have no. Oh, is it Quebec? <laughs> no oh, I thought it was somewhere in Europe. All right, wherever I, she I is, might be also wrong. I don't where, know. I don't have she, proof. she got a sandwich and she eats it. What is turned to the side? Two forty-five. I can't handle really? that. At two forty-five. Yeah, watch her eat the sandwich. I can I cannot stand for this. As as so, someone from the New Jersey area where we eat lots of subs and things like that, 
I cannot stand for that. Um, well, you know, it's it's the Korean traditional way of eating American sandwiches. There's no sandwich. way. <laughs> she's, she's seen enough Subway ads in Korea to know you eat the sandwich horizontal, not vertically. Do you eat Do you eat corn the long way, Warren? I don't think you do. So, How do you eat corn what? the long way? What? Never, that's an internet meme. So, the, so you should eat the sandwich horizontal. Corn! That being said, I think the song was okay. It was nothing that blew my mind off, and I had wish I had just seen a little bit more performance aspects, which I think is her strong suit. So, what about you, Anita? I'm gonna hand it off. Well, my opinion on that whole thing, I I think the theming of this song, right? Oh, okay. Vampire. We're talking about theming, not, right. right? Not sandwiches. No, vampire. Okay, okay vampire theme. Well, I guess it kind of it kind of connects to that. Was that I understood it as like the storyline was that she was not familiar with the outside world, right? Like, she was kind of like, oh, should I leave? Should I not leave? And then at the end, she does. And, like, exploring what's it, whatever is on the outside, right? Of her right. castle area, right? So that's that's what I thought. Like, I wonder if that was a, a detail that they included with the sandwich so that it seemed like she was not <gasps> human. Yeah, maybe like, that's what it is. She's Warren, never had a sandwich before. Warren, this was in Barcelona. <laughs> was it? Okay. Yeah, it was in Barcelona. Close enough, right? <laughs> 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 outside Korea. <Quebec. laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> it, it would be really cold. You think she's going to wear that one halter top in Quebec? Well, maybe she filmed it in June. I don't know. Fair, 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 fair. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Barcelona. I'm sorry, Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah, no, I feel like, honestly, concepting was pretty cool. I do feel like I I do side with with Doug on the um, on the idea that for a debut, I kind of felt like there could have been a little bit more to I don't know to just pull on the known talents that she does have and like kind of reiterate like oh this is who she is plus this new thing right it felt like this was all trying to be new and it felt a little like oh. Well, where's the choreo? Like, no choreo. Like, where's, like, the performance aspect? Like, not really there. So, I, I don't know. I guess it felt like it seemed like we were trying to go into a very new direction very, very quickly um, instead of easing in into it, I think, which I thought might have worked better. But I don't know. I don't hate the song. I just feel like I was wanting more. Let me let me be the WM devil's advocate here, right? Mm-hmm. Because... I think there's a reason why they intentionally don't have any choreo in the music video. Um, and they have a song like this. And I feel like it's very clear that they're trying to show off a different side of Treyon's talents. Not only as a performer or a dancer, but also as a vocalist. Um, mm -hmm. I think most K-pop fans or most people who listen to K-pop to a degree kind of know who Treyon is at the very least. Mm -hmm. People know yes. that she was on Street Woman Fighter. People know she was, like, known as the person who is really capable of dancing, right? Um, mm -hmm. So WM goes, okay, we all know that. Why don't we have a song that showcases her vocal talents, which I think her voice tone is very nice in this song. Um, so you end up with this project, which pulls away from just the dancing abilities a little bit. and shows off her abilities as a vocalist and, and someone who is able to carry a song by herself without 11 other members involved in the group. And I think that's, this does that really, really well. Because um, there's not really a moment where I go, hmm, you know, I wonder what this would have sounded like with a different vocal tone, um, which admittedly has happened with a lot of the other Eyes One soloists. That's got to be, got. Mm -hmm. I have to admit. That doesn't happen with this track because I feel like the track was very, very well built for her vocal tone to begin with. And you end up with a situation where it's arguably a lot less typical k-pop but in all the right ways this is, that's my takeaway here and that's where i was like really excited you know um mm. it also might be because i'm not like super drawn into dancing moments in music videos i man i yeah. we could have got some hair choreography right anita that, uh... we could have oh yeah. <sighs> it's a bit of a shame maybe next time maybe next time yeah this is only the beginning <laughs> we don't know what she's coming for the second yeah no yeah i mean okay okay to be completely fair, I think mm. this is way more palatable than almost any other of the Eyes One debuts. I will give you yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a terrible, I will give you this. terrible yeah, For the start. amount of pooping you did mm. before recording, that is well, a bit I told, of a twist. I, I told you all my problems were with the decision-making, <laughs> not the song. 
Okay. Okay. Fair.、Mm. Fair. 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 I. I. I mostly definitely actually yeah I do agree with you. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um.、Uh, it's it's overall it's I for me I know you like it a lot for me it's just you know it's pleasant. pleasant. Yeah.、Uh, pleasant. This yeah this is this is I like this. I don't have as many <laughs> fundamental problems with this one than I do some other Eyes One song, um, Eyes One solo songs. Like, I think the song itself is pretty good. There may, there、right. might be a couple I'm not remembering, but I think I agree with you in general in that aspect. Let's move on to the next one.、Yeah. We have Unbi, fellow Eyes One member with Underwater. She's from Wulim. She debuted 2014 with Yea, 2018 with Eyes One, 2021 as a soloist.、The、last three songs: Glitch, Mirror Door. She also has 26 music show wins, uh, with Eyes One. I I think I have more problems on a musical level with this one than I do the Cheon song. Okay. Yeah. I I, I think、uh, I okay. Here's the thing. During、uh, during the Eyes One era, I was the absolute humongous, the most, the largest proponent of Unbi and her parts in these Eyes One songs. Right. Yeah, I always yeah. said, "Oh, did you see the Unbi part? It was the best part of the whole song." I think I said that for like multiple of the songs.、Um, yeah,、mm. you did. What what I am slowly realizing is, I think I liked Unbi in these point moments, <laughs> right?、Mm, or maybe, or maybe and, it was it's that the point moments were more organized. Like it they're more feel... organized, and it just yeah, hits yeah, yeah. what she's tremendously good at. Like she, Unbi is very good at sudden impact. You know. She got the power. It's like boom, unbi time, right?、Mm. For me, on these prolonged songs that we've been getting from her, so glitch was a, an outlier because the the chorus was more based on the music production side than actually her, right? Right. I would say.、Mm. Um, right.、Yeah. This one is pretty much a singing chorus. I'm the bad. I'm the bad. I just feel like to me. I did. This might be an unpopular opinion. It comes off a little too abrasive on the top end. The singing, I feel it's like loud, like a little too, too, too much for me. I think that's unpopular, though. I think it's an unpopular take. I think a part of that might be the way they mixed her vocals, because they definitely didn't get that with her previous releases.、Mm-hmm. I, I under, I think I know what you're referring to. I definitely understand it because、like, I, yeah, da, 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 over and over again, right? That high registry. Yeah, boom, 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 the whole it, time. there's there's not a lot of like movement in terms of melody.、No. It's a little over compressed, which is it's fine. Is what that's what K-pop does. Um, it, it it that problem is a lot less noticeable when you're listening to group tracks because you have、there's, changes in voice tones, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah,、that、I think that's basically what I was trying to say. Right. Right. Um, it's it's like my one of my roommates used to call it the cheese problem. Where like cheese, cheese is great when you put it in any food,、uh, but a block、eh. of cheese by itself is kind of meh, you know. No, even a cheese platter, you need the multiple cheeses, or else you're getting too、sure. much of the cheese. Right, sure. That's I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah,、right. yeah. That that being said, for me though, once we hit the verses and she's not just at that high registry hitting it over and over again,、mm. I think it sounds great throughout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I do think that part kept it up. Um, I I do think. I kind of agree with you. The chorus was a bit. It. I mean, it happens. I. I don't know. I. I think for for me, for the most part, song is not something that does a lot for me personally speaking. It's the kind of moonbathon that I was memeing about back when rumor was around, which I think that was before he started the show, right? Right, it was. It's about the time. It was about, about around then. Yeah. Yeah. Warren was like, "I don't like Moonbathon. I'm not a huge fan of Bandit and their Moonbathon either." Yeah. <laughs> that, that was、I、like a running、this. meme back in like yeah. Yeah. O- early Soldier Talk days. I used to be a huge ballad and 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 Moonbathon hater,、um, oh、which God,、yeah. <laughs> to a degree I kind of still am.、Um, I wouldn't say Underwater is like straight Moonbathon, but it feels a little too formulaic for me personally. There. You know, follow a lot follows a lot of the same tropes that you hear with that kind of genre.、Um, so I mean, you end up with the situation where, like, if you like that sound, I'm sure you'll like it. To me, there's you know, I'm I would like to hear different drum samples in the song. You know, like,、mm. like before the chorus hits, there's the pa pa sound. You know, do you、yeah. have any idea what I'm talking about? Like, there's like a drum sound that's like. <laughs> 
And yes, that yes, yeah. right, that same sound is like I don't know where what exact what exact sample pack it's coming from. Maybe it's cashmere. I assume it's cashmere because that's what every K-pop producer pulls from. But I've heard that way too many times at this point. You know what I mean? Like oh yeah, the brump that thing. Right, right. Yeah, the yeah, moment okay, you hear I've heard that it, a million like, times. Yeah, right, yeah. it's uh, stuff like that. Like like yeah, the way the song is arranged. Um, it, it it doesn't help that all Moombaton songs then sound similar because they're pulling those same sound effects that they're yeah. all just copying each other. Yeah. Right. And and so I think for the most part, without with the exception of the drop being a more of a singy drop, mm. it feels very formulaic and in, in the in the box with that aspect and very very safe. And I kind of understand, right? They're trying to pull Unbi's best strengths into the album because mm-hmm. or in the song because if you think about Unbi in the moment she rose to popularity it was like parts in Lavi and Rose it was rumor that really pushed her like, she's known for this her reminded me of that mm-hmm. yeah. powerful killing points is what, what she basically got famous for right, in all of these right. songs and yeah. this song does give a lot of moments for her to shine in that aspect in a in a, in a, in a BPM and a style of music that she performs really, really well in. So it feels like there's a there was a bit of a business move that, you know, why they did that. I'm sure a lot of her fans are also like very satisfied with that. Um, but there there's, actually, there's 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 no singular really killing point in this song though for her, I don't think. There there was one moment that I really liked after the okay. second chorus. You hear a mm-hmm. different set of instruments, you hear a different port uh, It's port 158. 158. It's Is that when the electronic pianos come in? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I love yeah, yeah. That okay, part. that part's good. That part's right. good. That part was great. That part was great. I know Unbi has a more of a Loki vocal part there. That part was great. Mm. Great chords, great vocals, amazing. I wish that was the whole song, to be quite honest. I'm sorry. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> me oh, too. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Good lord. Please don't hate on just me. <laughs> I have um, I'm gonna make a like a really quick aside because I have been meaning to tell Warren this for two weeks, but I kept forgetting. It's in terms oh. of musical production. Mm. You know the um Luna. Odd Eye song Girlfront that has that package in a vlog last week. Who? Casey Nice Dead. Oh, Casey, my man. <laughs> so th- 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 I was like, oh my god, Warren would hate that this happened. But yeah, there's th- in the song, the Luna song Girlfront. Um, Shout out very... to Sorry, yeah, keep going. No, there's this very apparently commonly used sample package and Casey Neistat used it in his vlog. So it sounds like you would think, wait, does Casey Neistat love Girlfront? But no, no, he just no. used the same package. Uh. <laughs> for, for context, right? What's happening here is p- producers buy these things called sample packs. If you don't know what that is, it's mm-hmm. a zip. It's essentially a zip file full of like different instruments, different drum sounds. Um, singular sounds, future based sample pack is one that has all the melodies for the KC Nice Dad video and, and Girls Front that, you know, we keep memeing about. Um, Kashmir is another one. If you look up Kashmir K-pop on YouTube, you'll you'll see exactly what I mean. Um, a lot of K-pop is... is um, A lot of K-pop producers, I mean, uh, write beats off of sample loops they find on Kashmir, which, you know, sometimes it's a little creative, sometimes it's very creative, sometimes it's not creative. Um... The, the part where I have an issue with the Unbi track is that the sound I mentioned earlier being in like every Moombathon Deep House track that we've heard. Oh my god, I just looked on Twitter. People think that he just took their song and put it on his video. Uh, yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, go, all right. go, going back to Underwater, Anina, how, how do you overall feel about this one? Um, well, yeah, like I mentioned, I feel like that one moment that we talked about at 158, when it Minute 158, yeah, I think, is when it switches. And I feel like, I I don't think it's any surprise that I've been a a fan of the Glitch sound, her previous Mm -hmm. release, which I feel like was a little bit of that at that moment. Um, And I don't know, I feel like I definitely agree and I can see the reasoning as to why they took this route for this comeback, like those moments that she's known for and like that impact. I just, I do feel like it, felt like it could have been organized a little better so that it didn't feel like a constant force, you know, like throughout the whole vocal line, I guess, in mm-hmm. the chorus. I don't know. Maybe a little bit of reorganizing might have made it a little less forceful or like too too much. Because I feel like the the way that you feel that impact is when there's like ebbs and flows, right? Where right. you 
where you kind of balance it out so that you can actually see the difference. Pacing. That's the word you're looking for. Yeah. The pacing. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. But I mean, Corey on point, I feel like she's she's a great performer. I just feel like it could have been a little more on that end. I, I guess the the issue I I had would be so over especially one like this right the one that the last one glitch I thought was a, like I thought that was great decision making to do something like that because it was a little yes, out of the box yeah. something like this when I when I listen to this underwater song I'm like you know I feel like I could just listen to a plethora of different like Chunga dance tracks and get the same kind of experience right oh, yeah and I think for for Unbi and her career it's like she needs to somehow have a consistent, unique aspect of her songs in order to establish herself as being different from someone like a Chunga, right? I think. And Mm -hmm. I I don't, I think we were on the right track with Glitch, but I don't know if this one was also a good follow-up to do that kind of thing. Yeah, maybe it's because Glitch didn't sell that well or something. I I really, we really can't I don't know why it didn't. It was so good. Yeah, it it is a bit of a shame because at the end of the day, if I need to listen to a song like Rumor, I'll go listen to Rumor. No, I I don't need another song like Rumor. Albeit the song is not Rumor per se, but you get the idea, right? Like, we have plenty of songs in this style. similarity. Right, right. And and if I need to listen to songs in that style, I'll go listen to songs that already exist, that came before it. Um... Yeah, I'm looking at circle chart. Dora went 14, Mirror 61, which was non-single, so it's fine. Glitch was 13th, Underwater 31. So I think Dora was helped by the fact that it was her debut. I think Glitch was did well because it's a good song. And then Underwater just didn't do as well. So, Well, you know. not only that, if, if her third album is not selling as well as her second album, that probably means the second album wasn't as appealing in... in- Grabbing. So her sales are open, which is the one doors from uh, fifty eight thousand. Color had fifty eight thousand. Lethality, which is the one that we're currently on, uh, October twelfth, it has forty two thousand. Right. The, the the way I the way I think of it, the the sales of the third album is the results of the second album. That's the way I think of it in my head. Okay, mm. I could see that. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to see though. I think there's a like obviously NB is talented. There's a lot there. I just want to see a. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see better song selection is what I think it would come down to to me. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, now that I see the sales, like, she's selling 41,000. That's yeah, not... She's doing fine. No, she's, she's making money. Fine. Yeah. She's, she's doing fine. Yeah, she's, maybe she's not making a huge bucket load of money, but like, she's making good yeah. amounts of money. No, she, she has a solid fandom and she's making good money, but I want to see her break through. You know how Chunga, like, although Chunga doesn't have great sales, people know who Chunga is. Right, right. right. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Chunga shows up on a variety show, people who, whoa, it's Chunga. Wow, fantastic, right? Mm. I don't think you could say the same thing about Unbi, and I think that that's going to take some time and some good decision-making on Willem's part. And I think that's even a little harder for Unbi than it is for Chungha because Chungha began with a little bit of general public recognizability. Correct. Unbi's is a little weaker because the way yeah, I a lot of these A lot of these Eyes One girls don't have the most visibility. Like I know Yena is lucky in a lucky position because she had been on variety shows. Like She's on variety shows in general. Uh-huh. So people... Yeah. Like some people who watch Variety will know who she is who don't listen to as much K-pop. Right. And obviously the girls in La Seraphim and Ive are doing fine because those groups are popping off, right? Right, right. But in terms of the soloist, there's um outside of Yena, there's not too much general public traction at the moment, I would say. So we'll mm. we'll have to see what's gonna happen. We shall that. see. All right. Let's move on to the next song. Uh Thursday, Akmus Chanhyuk. Well, Thursday, uh October 20th, Akmus Chanhyuk had a solo debut with Panorama. So he's from YG. Debuted 2012 with his sister in Akmu, and they have 15 music show wins. Interesting song. Um, if you don't know, mm. Chanyok has been doing this performance art thing lately, and I think oh, it's yeah. very reflective in this song and things like that. So his YouTube channel, he has a lot of these like art art videos where sometimes he just record for 20 minutes of him doing the same thing. Like he'll be standing at a crosswalk in the middle of the night, or there was a one that went viral where in one of the major commuting hubs in korea he sat on like a lazy boy and he read the newspaper and drank his coffee during rush hour that that got some traction in the the general news sphere in korea mm-hmm. um even with this song he had a live stage where he shaved his head during the stage oh, yeah. yeah he had a live stage where he did kind of a gorilla concert but he was in like a plexiglass box so he's been he's been hitting this artistic scene as hard as he could um mm-hmm. i think that this song in itself is a really solid song from him. Like, I'm pretty impressed with this individual song. There's something about it for me. Like, 
I, I think as much as the I think the song is good and I really like the organ that he used at certain point, I'm I'm liking the messaging. Okay. Cause I feel like it's I'm I might be the target audience these people who are getting a little into their twenties <laughs> early thirties and he's talking and the, the this the music video shows him in like a potential car accident and his life is going in front of his eyes like a panorama so that's how the song makes mm-hmm. sense um and he's talking about like have I done every like I should I should do more things on my bucket list right like is this the way I'm going to die like am I just gonna is my life gonna end and I just feel unfulfilled. Things like that. I feel like that's good messaging for someone like twenties, early thirties, in this, in an existential way. Mm. He used to fill his bucket list. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I have a bucket list. I should make one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like I definitely also really felt compelled by the lyrics. Um, I I think there's something really interesting about the sound though because the lyrics by themselves could feel like very heavy, right? I think they could they could be heavy, but the sound makes it more light and very soft. The yeah. the sound that I could compare it to was post Malone circles, if people are familiar with that. And that it's not exactly the same, but it's like a very like it's like both electronic but also like slightly acoustic in a way. Um yeah, I so can it see that. feels like approachable. It doesn't feel like super super poppy, but there's that vibe to it. And I think it it goes really well with like the heavy subject matter. Like, it's not it's not as light as you might expect for a yeah. pop lyrics, but it, it has that sound coupled with it. So I I like the the decision on that. I uh, they do nice. they do Inception a little bit too, where he's getting shocked, mm. and then there's sparks mm. goes off in the in the dream world. Mm. That's true. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. As he is passing away, apparently. Yeah. Um, I no, I see what you mean with the uh, post Malone. I was thinking more of like weekends recent stuff. Um, less with After Hours and more Thon FM. Um, a little bit. I don't. I I I I've checked out his whole album. I I was seeing all the build up he's been giving with this his uh performative art. I was very interested in what he wants to do with his album. Um, if it feels like a cross between Korean pop music. And weekend, both with Don and Don FM and After Hours, and a little bit of Jesus near the end as well from Kanye West. Um, I'll, some of these musical references, I feel like he's pulling a little too hard, to be quite frank. Um, to the point where I start questioning where he wants to go with his music. But that, I mean, at least we have a little bit of consistency. I, I think I kind of dig that. Mm. Um. The I don't know. I don't think the messaging itself is like too dark and grim to begin with, especially given that it's like so. It's so clearly, fo- uh, what's the word? Fiction. It's right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. right, right. It because the whole song is about his moment of death. Uh, according to the music video, it looks like he was in a car accident. Um, and you know, he builds upon that message throughout the entire album, and and this is very much leading in towards the lesser of the not as depressing kind of sounds or or songs or actually for that matter though i feel like with the topic in mind this album itself isn't particularly depressing but if anything actually very very hopeful and very much like i'm still young i'm gonna live my life it's gonna be great even though Mm, he puts himself through this like conceptual position of like what if I die tomorrow? Kind of a situation. It yeah. felt more. It felt. In, it felt mm-hmm. instead of like him dying. It felt more like I'm having a quarter life crisis. Right. You know. Right, That's what right. it felt more like to me than him dying in any sense. Because the whole the whole theming to me was like you wouldn't say like I I should try out more things on my bucket list if you died. Right. You should. You would have said. I should have done more things on my bucket list. It didn't well, feel right. Isn't that the wording though? Like I haven't finished all these things on my bucket list. Let me find. The... I need to do all these things on my bucket list. Yeah. Yeah, I need to try yeah. everything on my bucket list. It's not saying like I regret not doing things on it. So I, I feel like there the the reason why I didn't interpret this as being sad because the, there was no regret. You know, it was more just like, mm. oh, I gotta get to that. You know, um, which I think is a very common thing when you're in, when you're having your like you're 25, late 20s, and you're having a mid, like a quarter life crisis, right? <laughs> you're like, I need to do things, right? I right. think that's that's what he's getting at, and I, I and I also never felt that he was actually dying, even though there was like some funeral 
uh, visual imagery, like with the white flowers, the mums, which is a sign of a funeral in Korea, yep. and organ music, like at a funeral or something like that. I mean, I really, I really love the organ. We need more good organ. Really good stuff. Nice. Yeah. The organ was a great decision because we don't hear that very often in K-pop, um, particularly. Yeah, and and I think I think yeah, this is one of those songs you you should check out if you like this song. You should probably check it out of the al- context of the album, because it the way I understood it. The first track sets up who he is in terms of his actual life. The second track is like the accident, the car accident. The third oh. track is like him realizing he's about to die, and he's like, "I, dude, like you know, the panorama. It's the you know, what's the what's what's Jumadung in English? Like you know how like when you're about to die, you apparently you see your whole life flash before your eyes. That's where panorama is coming oh, from, yeah, right? Yeah. Right? Yes, exactly. Right, and the final track of the album is called." Funeral hope, funeral meaning funeral. The the lyrics are like about him in his funeral, him seeing all the people he loves. Hallelujah, I'm going to heaven. Um, and and none of it mm. in the entire album, none of the album is like I want to die, I am depressed. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The whole album I is think, like mm. putting himself in this fictional situation, and and then looking at it through different lenses in between the third track and the final track of the album. I think that solves. That is achieved like pretty interestingly. It's just the sound was a lot, you know, sound was a little uninteresting to me. They a spent a lot of money on this music video. Oh, it's like, great. I, it's you got to give credit yeah. to, very to YG. They, they, it's a very visually pleasing music video. There's a lot going on. Good storytelling, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. Overall, for so, you know, his sister sings a lot of traditional ballad stuff with her beautiful voice, right? Um, he, He's more like the creative. G- mad genius guy right you know he's the one making their songs having like who who writes a song about a dinosaur that becomes a hit right you know something like that and he's a bit of a he, I, he's a bit of a, a i want to call him a weird guy he's a strange guy let's be straight up here i saw him on the show i live alone where he's living by himself he, he's a little bit of an interesting fellow i think this was a good solo debut for him for sure i think it's just i think it's hitting it at what he's to me he's he's really getting what he wants to say out there without any restraints i feel um which is a good thing Pretty cool stuff. Them organs, though. We need more. That was... <laughs> Man, you the, really like the organs. Bro, when the organs came in, I was like, oh my god, this is... Gr-. That one, That took it from a good song to a great song, in my opinion. Wow, wow. The organs. <laughs> um, all right. Last song. Thursday, October 20th. Uh, Itzy had a pre-release called Boys Like You. It is in English. Uh, they are from JYP. Mm-hmm. Maybe 2019, last three songs were Sneakers, Loco, and Mafia in the Morning. 45 music show wins so far, which I believe puts them at 15th place all time. So that 15th. is the legacy. Wow. 15th. All right. This it's interesting. Boys Like You is a pre-release, but there's no actual album announced. Oh, uh-huh. okay. <laughs> they just say upcoming album, but I'm pretty sure there's no actual date for the real album yet. Well, that's Okay. I'm sure it'll happen in the next five years. Okay, right? this song is this is okay. I don't know how to start with this one. This song reminds me of some kind of like pop song from like 2013 or 12 or maybe a little earlier. I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. there's there's a campiness to this. The high school party trope. There's a there's like a lot going on. Like. Ryujin's telling me I'm not your mommy. I was very confused. <laughs> that might be line of the year. The mommy line. Do I look like, like your mommy? Do I look like your mommy? No, Do I the, look the, like your mommy? The Sogi one, though. The, the Sogi one? 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 Which one? The, be- the beginning one. Like, I kissed your oh, brother. Oh, I kissed your one? brother. Oh, yeah. oh wait. <laughs> We've like, kissed your brother, and I'm not. Do I look like your mommy in like oh, three man. weeks? Why wow. is K pop obsessed with Crazy Alabama stuff. all of a sudden? What oh, is going on? <laughs> What? Oh, okay, th- this song though, I don't think is fantastic. I'm gonna just straight up say it. I think it's like, how do I? It's the the best part of the song is that Chedion got good parts, right? Oh, that they yeah. gave her the the this, the, great the, vocals, the great, yeah. they gave her the good vocal parts, but the rest of the song is kind of just like, all right. <laughs> Like, it's not great, right? <laughs> I feel like you would enjoy it, though, if you wanted that sort of, like, slightly retro, I guess, like, that pop, like, very stereotypically pop sound, you know? Because um, I feel like, to me, I didn't mind it as much because it was coupled with, like, very tropey things, like the Halloween party, the 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 theming, too, like, 
kind of like a fight between friends, you know, for one guy. Like it that comes, seemed very tropey. It thing. comes off so like so high. Like, I wouldn't even not even high teens, just so teenagery. Maybe it's like a little too it much is, for me. Yeah. Like really I don't know. I feel like an overdose of teenness in this. Here's the, here's the <laughs> thing. I, I I also agree with the criticisms you guys are giving. Um. Although I also admit I am no longer fifteen, I imagine if I was fifteen, maybe my perspective of the song would have would been. Would you a think it, different. you might be like, right. yo, this is a banger, yo. Uh, who it's knows? Bad. That might have been. That being said, that's why I was actively checking out TikToks about it, because that's where I imagine fifteen year olds mm-hmm. are. I'm not gonna hack into other people's B reels to check out what they think about it, Um <laughs> but <laughs> I was looking at the TikTok and reactions, and a lot of them weren't super big on them either. I'm guessing because this is a little detached from the stuff that made it popular in the first place. And that's where, like, the five angel costumes was a little bit of a very unpleasant surprise for me, particularly, given Itzy's whole identity is built on, I'm different, I'm different than all of you. Now he, now they're all wearing the same stuff. You know? And that just visually for me was... I guess I'm nitpicking, but like visually for me, like just seeing that was like, well, like this feels very detached from where we began as Itzy. And I understand that they need to change their color up at, at, to a degree at a certain point. But it felt like we're doing it at the cost of uh, of what they've done up until this point. And I do agree Their with identity, Doug. You mean? Sorry, what? Their identity, you mean, like as a group? Right, right, right. Because it's at this point, up until this point, has had a certain color in terms of music and identity. Sneakers was a little out there. There was you know, Itzy, uh, sorry, uh, Mafia in the morning was a little out there. But there was other oh. stuff. If you think of Itzy, you know, you have a specific concept in well, mind, the, the, right? The a character with, and identity. The problem with Itzy is everyone, when they think of Itzy, thinks of the first four releases. Dala Dala, Icy, <laughs> Wanna Be Not Shy, right? That's yeah. what everyone thinks of when you think of Itzy. And the problem with a song like this is, number one, it's a pre-release, right? We talked about how pre-releases, like, remember we talked about the BB song, right? We were like, man, that pre-release did a good job because it makes me excited for the actual release. Like, it hypes me up. I'm curious, curious. to see what happens next. Mm. A song like this as a pre-release makes me worried about the main song. Really? Yes, I'm I concerned. Worried, Same. per se. I'm I'm concerned. Here's and, the thing. And, yeah. And it's always followed up. People always interpret the song. They they listen to like boys like you. I saw this a couple times where they're like, oh, I don't know how I feel about this one. And then people always the next conversation was, man, the old songs used to be so good. That's what every, that's the conversation that keeps happening, I've seen. Yeah. And everyone's like, man, what happened after this mafia thing? Right? That's like Oh. The, the, the conversation I keep seeing in various circles about Itzy and their music and the progression of their their this discography. I mean, in hindsight, remember how we were, uh, we were we were pretty critical towards Loco and Swipe. Um, yeah, I'll take that over this Katy Perry Kesha, uh, Black Eyed Peas kind of mashup Dang, track. I um, prefer this. What? Anita prefers I prefer this. this. Well. You are you and I am me. I my name is not Anita and Warren is not shy, <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. So you're saying you prefer the lo- the loco sneakers run than this? Oh, I don't know if I would include sneakers in that run. No, Anita. I like sneak. I like really? sneakers more than Put this song. My sneakers, Five, on. sneakers on. I don't think he gets set go. Yeah. No, I like I like sneakers better than this. Here's the thing. I I I, oh. I generally, especially with K-pop, I feel very mixed about bringing in uh, trends from odd moments of time ago, like twelve years ago. I don't know. That feels like a bit of an awkward stretch. It's it's not something I'm particularly looking for at the given moment. I don't think it's what the audience is looking for at the given moment. Maybe it's what Joy P thinks it's looking for. Well, that, that maybe it's yeah, maybe it's what Joy P thinks we're looking for. But what I can tell you at the end of the day, end of the day is that I'm usually turned off when I hear a song that sounds oddly six, seven years old. This is kind of falling in that bucket a little bit, um, for me, um, mm-hmm. especially with the whole, you know, the barrage of names I mentioned earlier, Kesha. Katy Perry. This sounds very much like last Friday night, you know, like 
Oh, it does. Music video too. <laughs> a little wow. bit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, um, some things I wanna the English very good. I was surprised at how good the pronunciation was. Oh, I'm glad. Okay. This. Yeah, it's nice. the English was okay. good. Some things I thought were weird. It's, it's like a high school trope. The, the the male actor is at least thirty two. I think <laughs> he looked he looked really? hella old. For the, no, 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 I made that up. But he looked hella old to me to be in this music video. He kind of looked like Beko from New West a little bit. I thought. What? Um, oh, no. What? Actually, no, I'm wrong. I I had a vibe <laughs> from one camera angle I saw. But like, I thought the the, the actor was a little old. It's like you know that thing where. Like um in Euphoria, some of the actors are like almost in their thirties. <laughs> and they're in Euphoria, I got the same thing. Um, uh, uh, that being said, I I just felt like this was kind of lightweight and kind of like a whatever song. Um, I don't think it's necessarily terrible. Like this is one of those songs that I don't think is bad, right? But I don't think it's great either. It's just kind of there. It it feels like the entire time I'm listening to it. I I here's the thing: the song is fine. The song works. Um. But like it sounds like something I would hear in a uh, Disney Channel movie yes, from like seven eight does. years it ago. Does. You know, it does. Like, you know, mm. like there's some voice over it going like this summer. You know, like like can Yujin find her love? You know, like tune in next week. <laughs> that kind of deal. Um, and and maybe you're into that. Maybe you are. I just don't find it particularly interesting because we've already seen so many good interpretations of it, and it's been left in the past. So how much? From it. How much game does this guy need to be talking to five girls who are all friends with each other? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous. Well, he's a good-looking guy, and maybe his armor. Is... Why he gets away with it? Yeah. <laughs> um, that being said, you know they released the last song, "Sneakers," in July, so it's been like relatively recent, right? That's one that sold over yeah. a million copies. Um. And they release a, an English pre-release now. We don't know exactly what it is for or when it is for. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be relatively soon, though, right? I or think else... it would make sense. Hmm. I I think the reason they released it now is that they are going on America tour. The America tour. Oh, that US makes tour. a lot of sense. Yeah, and apparently they're going to start performing it there. So that's what I think that is happening. So they need there. they needed the English song to do the u.s okay this makes more sense. yeah that's what i think yeah, it yeah, is yeah. yeah okay that makes sense also a fun mm -hmm. tidbit is that this track is written by none other than i had to pull it up here give me a second um it is the song is song uh song is written by a dude give me one second Hi. i closed the tab apparently no, song is written by didrick thought and sebastian thought and Haley eitken Three folks who worked on sneakers. By oh. the same people. Same people. I, uh, I guess they're having a lot of fun together with your IP. You know, just the that, that makes sense. songwriting party yeah. with the Z, Apparently, yeah. There's um, there's a couple of these um, non-Korean music people who actually like go to Korea quite often and work in person too. I've seen now. I saw this one girl yes. who was like vlogging about like, yeah, I'm in SM building. We're working on something. And I'm Ooh. like, that's pretty. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like, I, that's that's awesome. Um, all right, I think that's all the songs this week. Uh, the other songs were JB released "My Abandoned Love," We I released "Bray," Mimi Rose released "The Lululu," Stray Kids had a B-side "Chill," Mamamoo "One Two Three Oi," uh, Joe Yudi released "Lovable," Monster X's Kihyun released "Youth," and Pink Fantasy released "Get Out." All right. Spice chart, the soju chart thing from last week, episode 208, La Seraphim Anti-Fragile picked up its first crown. Second place was Dreamcatcher Vision. Third place was Cheon Hush Rush via Warren's Mode. <laughs> um, my chart this week, I'm going to put La Seraphim in first place. I think you still got to keep them there. Um, it's gotten more addicting as time has gone on. I I listen so, yes. that, so what I was like... When I was listening to like one song on the FIFA playlist, I threw anti fragile in it, so I like I can at least listen to that more. Um <laughs> second place, I have Chan Hyuk with Panorama. And in third oh. place, I have Cheon with Hush Rush. That is my chart. Good. Good chart. Ooh, Good chart great. that Cheon's on chart. it. Yeah. Yes. Alright. Well, I agree with first place. I'll start in first La place. Seraphim. I also have La Seraphim. Um, it's, it's very catchy. I feel like I really like 
the the choreo I think makes it even more fun, honestly. So props to choreography. Uh, second place, I moved up. Stray Kids. Um, Stray Kids. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Oddly enough, I feel like even though it's not like top song from them, I would say it's very catchy and I, and I I like the moments that they have. There's a lot of really good moments throughout the song. Why do um, I keep getting attracted? <laughs> that, yeah, that could be one. Um, <laughs> so that was the second. Third place. Um, <laughs> we good? Third place. What do you have, Anita? Third place. I have Tan Hyuk. I, I like okay. Panorama. I, I feel like they're i don't know i feel like i it's hard to be very critical of this type of genre because i do feel like he's going for a very specific vibe and like artistic choice um Mm -hmm. introspection and all that sort so but i i like the the execution of it for the most part i like the route he took in the instrumental and like the theming um the visuals also were really nice so i'll put it in third I also was impressed by the visual storytelling and the audio musical storytelling of Chan Hyuk. Um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I I did expect a little more. I'm not gonna lie. I I think my expectations mm-hmm. are a little higher than what we got. Um, particularly because while he does a decent job of conveying the message he wants to in the song. I guess I'm thinking about the album a little more actually. Um, where it it in the 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 middle section that I didn't really talk about just becomes kind of like normal pop music and not too far off from the stuff he's done with Akmu. Other than the sound, mm. the sound design is very much inspired by the folks I mentioned earlier: Kanye, Weekend, that kind of deal. Um, anyway, but the song itself, I think it's I think it's fine. I think it's actually pretty decent, and I really enjoy the message as well. Um. That's why it's getting third. Uh, third on my chart for this week. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, very analog. Very good analog sense, too. Um, mm. Hush Rush with... Hush, hush Rush with... Hush Rush with Cheon. Cheon Lee. Hush Rush. That's a hard word to say, apparently. Um, <laughs> it's going on second this week for me. Whoa! Ooh. Whoa! Ooh. Here's okay. the thing. Here's the thing. I listened to it a lot last week, and I'm still having fun. It's just you know maybe a little less fun with it. Okay. I see. And you know, sometimes I would shower in the mornings with Cheon's Hush Rush playing, but sometimes I'd be showering with Anti Fragile playing. Wow! Which is why I'm giving it. <laughs> that okay, honestly, that's been a bit of a grower. That's been definitely yes, a bit of a yes, grower. Right? Yes. I, I already I already liked it last week and I like it even more this week. Um that that whole like anti T T T that part I used to really not like it. Now I do. Uh you know, opinions change. There you go. That's what happens in twenty twenty two. I wouldn't say it's growth, but <laughs> yes. Cha- change, change. Change. Cha- change. Not I'm not growing. I'm still the same height I was in seventh grade or sixth grade as well, or actually fifth same. grade too. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> That's Bro. sad. J1 is so good. That's my main takeaway. Wow. Oh, um, yeah. She's oh, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. She's, she pulls it off. So that is your chart, Warren. That is impressive. Okay. Um, Go to gang. They have... They also have anti fragile in first place with 45 <gasps> points. Oh my god! Second place, they have Unbi underwater Ooh. with 22. Okay. And in third place, Dreamcatcher Vision with 20. Oh, let's just go, Dreamcatcher. The fourth mm. place was Chanhyuk with 18, but he doesn't get oh. any points from them. Hey! Close. So the chart is third place, Cheon Hush Rush with four points. Akbu's Chanhyuk mm. is second place with five. And then in first place, entering the Hall of Spice via double crowns is La Seraphim's Ooh, Anti-Fragile. Let's go! Wow. Whoa! Okay, let me add that to the chart. Wow. Wow. That's, That's unexpected. Impressive. Yeah. Okay, so I got to read the list now. 
All the spice now includes BTS Dynamite twice. I can't stop me. Dreamcatcher Ada, Ayo Lilac, Stacy ASAP, BTS Butter, Tay on Weekend, Something You Can't Sip with Us, Stacy Stereotype, Twice the Feel, 17 Rock with You, Chunga Killing Me, From Us 9 DM, Stacy Run to You, Red Velvet Feel My Rhythm, Dreamcatcher My Zon, Got 7 Na Na Na, Chunga Sparkling, New Jeans Attention, I've, I've After Like, Twice Talk That Talk, Crush featuring J Hope, Brush Hour, and now La Seraphin's Anti Fragile. You know, you could wow. you know you could just say it on normal speed. I can just speed you up in post. That's Ooh, fine. That's cool. I'm <laughs> challenging myself. Okay. Hey, this, <laughs> okay, is, a, this, is, this is a banging <laughs> playlist. These are some good songs. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Uh, finally, we're at show winners. Anita, hit us with them. Yes, we have a couple of them. First off, I've still winning with After Like. They won on Show Music Court and Kigayo, so they have a total of 14 win- wins for them. Wow. Congrats. Yeah, they keep winning. And then we have Stray Kids. Winning with Case 143, they won on show Champion, M Countdown, and Music Banks. We have a total of six wins. And then for their first win ever, we have DKZ with a uh, hung, I believe Ooh. is how you pronounce it. Formerly known show. as Donkas. Donkeys? Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah, they changed the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I looked it up, right? They're actually mm. starting to pop off a little bit. Ooh. We should pay more attention. Good for April, them. In April 12th, their Chase Episode 2 Maum sold 200k. And then wow. this most recent one, which just uh, released on October 6th, sold about over 100 so far. So they're kind of popping off, Donkeys. That's a good number. Mm-hmm. Look at these folks. Yeah, and yeah. they are from um, Donkyo is their label. I've never... Oh, no. Dongyo. 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 Never, yeah. heard, never heard of them, but like... Hey, they're kind of doing good. I'm I'm impressed, honestly. Um, shout out to them. First mm. one ever. It's a huge accomplishment. All right. That is the end of Soju Talk. Episode 209, part one. I almost ended the whole show. Oh, um, please, we'll be back not. after a short break. Three, two, one. Talk Nation, this is Anita here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soju Talk K-pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. And consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash sojutalk or donating to us at paypal.me slash sojutalk. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. All right, we're back at it with part two of Soji Talk episode 209. There was a lot of news. We got to get through a lot. Let's just do it. First one, uh, Jung Kyung-in, former CEO of Pearl Abyss, has become the new head of YG's Black Label. Whoa. In March of this year, Jung left Pearl Abyss, a significant Korean gaming company best known for Black Desert Online, which is a really popular MMO at the moment. Um, okay. The Black Label was established by uh, YG entertainment producer Park Hun-jun, a.k.a. Teddy, uh, under the YG umbrella in 2015, Jung started this month and will take uh, office officially after a resolution from the board of directors. So it seems like Teddy's like, I just want to make the music, man. So he's getting someone to run the company. Mm. Or maybe he's or, or maybe out. he's forced to. Yeah, yeah, or maybe he's forced to. We don't know um, why he's leaving. You kidding? So they said this guy, uh, this Jung guy, he's really good at getting investors and things like that. So he's been known to do that at his okay. at the while, while he was at Pearl Abyss. Hmm. And Black Desert Online is a pretty significant MMO too. So they got a guy with a lot of business acumen, essentially, I'm, in the company. I'm looking at apparently the amount of money that Jung Young In has brought into Pearl Abyss. It's a it's a big number. Uh, where it's a I, huge number. Yeah, yeah. I can't call, translate this into dollars off the top of my head it's a lot of money oh yeah um so, so he's good at his job <laughs> he's good at his job. that's good that's yeah good. Yeah. yeah i mean it's a lot of like stress right to run a company and be the I creative see, person yeah. for your company right so mm. i could see that yeah given the amount of memeing we've done with teddy as a producer in the past i hope to hey up I'm, we're not the only himself. people too right so he's probably hearing yeah. it from many sources yeah um all right, next one. The 2022 MAMA Awards have announced their nominees and voting has begun. In order to be eligible, the music must have been released between November 1st, uh, 2021 and October 21st, 2022. 
So voting will take place online through November 4th, uh, 12, uh, 1159 Korean Standard Time. So our activity at the post show today is we're just going to go through the nominees and probably make some predictions. So that's what we're going to do at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. So you'll want to stick around for that. It should be pretty fun. Yep, yep. All right, next one. So I told Anita about this. Warren, you didn't hear this. Popular Facebook page, Idol Issue, revealed to be owned by Kakao Entertainment. So what? basically, this is like a gossip tabloid Facebook page. And it has a million followers. Yeah. Oh, God. Right? And so it was known for posting various contents related to the Korean entertainment industry, including general news as well as rumors, controversies, etc. And people found out it was owned by Kakao Entertainment. The, that is fine in itself. The problem is they are under heavy fire for using images, videos, and content without consent from owners. And considering that Kakao is considered a giant in the IP industry, they're like, they're basically infringing copyright. Like they were just some random person who made a gossip page. Mm. So they were like, they have edited out watermarks and they were just posting people's photos and things like that. Because you know how tabloid um, Facebook, Twitter pages, they just kind of post whatever, right? And no one cares. Because they're insignificant. But it turns out this one is owned by Kakao. So people are like, what the heck were you guys doing? Not even that's not the only issue here though, is it? Like the the concept that a social media I guess what tabloid is like owned by like a major company, that's a that's like proof that the jokes we've been making behind the scenes is a real thing, you know? Thinking yeah, about all the rigging stand scandals that's happened. And in they're the last like they're like years. stirring the pot behind the scenes too. Right. Yeah. And they oh, yeah. post like they can post certain rumors or not post certain rumors, you know, to influence things. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a lot of like Shifty layers stuff. to this. And the the, mm. the base layer is though they've been basically using copyrighted images and videos and things like that mm. and just been stealing them. That's kind of, kind of ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, here's the here's the thing. At the end of the day, if they're not trying to profit off of these content, I it there is a fair layer of fair usage fo- where this fall like a-, a lot of this does fall into fair usage, I think. Um mm. we soldier talk, when we make thumbnails, we use official teaser images from yep. a lot of the releases that happen. And a lot of this falls under fair usage because the the TLDR of it is that people aren't coming to Soldier Talk to view the teaser images. Rather we're sure. using it as a basis to talk about and have a conversation about. Um, mm-hmm. that's why technically speaking, if we played songs in the actual podcast, we could get, we could get away with fair usage, but like, you know, the way the algorithm works these days, not the best move. That's why we don't do that. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one side of it. The other side of it, that's really concerning to me, I guess, is, is, is the whole like breaking thing. Like, Hazegi, remember how that was a hot topic? Mm-hmm. The counter argument for Sajigi has always been, oh, these songs were posted by random people on Facebook and they went viral and that's where they gained popularity first and then that trickles down into Melon or whatever streaming platforms other people are using. That's the counter argument for Sajigi. That's what it has always been. This is like very if if what you say about Kakao owning Idol Issue is true, that's proof that there's big companies out there behind these seemingly random meme pages. Yep. Um, mm. Yeah, that's less of a K-pop concern and more of a K-music. How much of it is actually independent? Question mark. Yeah, kind they, of they had 1.3 million followers, too. Jeez. That's a lot That's a for lot. a random Facebook page. I went to a fa- I went to the like I went to the, I sorry I went to the Facebook page. A bunch of my friends have liked the <laughs> this page. Oh. <laughs> a bunch of my friends. I yeah, don't. Yeah. I know they don't listen to K-pop. I know they don't. <laughs> they don't know who DKZ is. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? It's just something to fill your feed with, honestly, right? Yeah. But yeah, if, if people who aren't too invested are just consuming their K-pop information this way, and they put something like. A rumor about someone that you know not that flattering rumor about someone like that a lot of people will consume it that way then right and interpret it as truth because they don't care too deeply to 
look it up, you know? Right, right. I mean, part, honestly, that's part of the reason why I don't use Facebook anymore is like there's a lot of random pages that have information right they were at one point Bro, memes and some people buy yeah them. some of some of the pages were memes all the, like 10 years ago and i look back and now it's like all sus things yeah. or something now yeah. it's like buy this used car for cheap and i'm like no give me yeah. my memes and comic sans I, please yeah i thought there were memes here um yeah Apparently so that not. happened good lord um next one nct dream the movie in a dream will be released worldwide to theaters in November. Oh, wow. So it's one of those oh. concert movies. So the feature film ah, will spotlight the group on stage and backstage at their Olympic Stadium show in Seoul from September earlier this year. Fans will get to see preparations that went into the concert and interviews with all seven members of NCT Dream. So it's a pretty standard concert film thing. Mm. But the interesting thing is they're getting a worldwide, re worldwide release. Wow. So that oh, should be pretty good. Yeah, right. Worldwide release. Interesting. Speaking of Korean movies, I went and saw Decision to Leave uh, again this weekend. Oh, wow. Oh it's, <laughs> I know I talked about it last weekend, uh, last week. It's starting to release in American theaters. I really, really think you guys need to really I'm watch gonna this. I'm going to look for it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, again, I probably would have watched it with your parents, but still. You wouldn't? I wouldn't. Um, that, oh, jeez. Yeah. I mean, it's a very short scene. Okay. It's not going to be that awkward. I did see it for the first time with my mom. Um. Oh no! <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's a very hey man. After your hotel experience in Korea, everything is fine. <laughs> all right, uh, next one. G Idol's nude uh, picked up its first perfect all kill by placing number one on real on all the real time and weekly charts on iChart. Wow, impressive. Considering we were not the biggest wow. fans of that song, hey, Korea really likes it. They have a massive leave over i think it's after like is the song that's in second they're beating it by like double wow. its score essentially oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah 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 nude has 220 points and after like has 112 good lord yeah oh my god so it is dominant right now it's wild yeah yeah people like it people love whatever gil is producing uh next one bit of a this is kind of a rumor kind of a new so take this with a grain of salt so producer swin lee Said on Instagram Live that Gongwon Sonyo's company, The Wave Music, is gone and closed. Uh, he also stated that it, at, in, in its current state, it's just a paper company that exists on paper but isn't functioning with any staff or office. So he was one of the main producers for Gongwon Sonyo. He pretty much produced all of their songs, right? So it's like mm -hmm. Teddy with Blackpink situation. Okay. And he's like, yeah, the company's gone. Like, oh, no. Dunzo. Um, but he later cl clarified that the group is not disbanding but simply will not have any more activities for the rest of the year. He added that there is potentially opportunity for the group to resume their activities under a new company in the future, but nothing is confirmed yet, and he essentially hopes that he could work with them in the future. So it's a bad situation because if they don't find another company to take in Gongwon Sonyo, they don't really have any backing. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize it was this bad. I mean, yeah, I, I had no clue. Hmm. I remember they used to be under Kiwi Music or Kiwi Entertainment. Um, yep. And I heard they were switching companies a couple of times. Um, so that, you know, that, I mean, I kind of thought something was up. But mm. now the, right. So right now they're, technically speaking, they're under Wave Music, which is a part of Ascendio Entertainment, which is traditionally not music related they do a lot of film and drama related things for instance um they they fought they produced uh the movie with uh Ma Dong -sok, the outlaws back in 2017 which was a huge hit um so it's not like they have nothing under their portfolio but i wouldn't go around saying their portfolio i the most i look i looked thing. up the producer swinley in february of this year he said he wasn't paid for some work that he did with gongon sonyo either so there was a money issue even in the beginning of the year. Okay. So yeah. Not good. When you're when you stop paying the producers, you're gonna get no music then. You know, like yeah. straight up. <laughs> All right. Um. In other news, on October 20th, FNC announced that Sol Hyun has left the company. She Ooh. had been with them since probably her trainee days, but she debuted with AOA in 2012. Oh so my God. She was there for a very long time. Wow. Um, Why she leave? Because the group is essentially done, so like okay, but like 
I would assume FNC has given Sonja hey, no, everything no, she needs. No, 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 she, no. She's going. She's on the up. So it is reported that she had meetings with Eum Hashtag, which houses Junjian, So Jihei, and Kim So Hyun. So that's why she's leaving because all three are A list actresses. So she wants to join the big leagues. Oh, boy. So it was reported that she talked to them about signing an exclusive agency. So she wants an upgrade in company. What? Okay. Apparently, this company is literally founded by Chun Ji Hyun. Yeah, it's the top tier like female actor actress company essentially. Wow, that's. Could you imagine Chun Ji Hyun's your boss? <laughs> Let's see what it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. So if if this does turn out, I honestly that's probably the best move because although FNC is a good company. They're not just focused on acting, you know. They're focused on other things mm, as well. True. Whereas if she went to this actress company, their only sole focus is act like acting. So that would make sense for her. At at this uh, point, where like Seolyeon hasn't done anything as a solo musician, I think she's really looking forward to her career as an actress. I mean, objectively mm. speaking, even in AOA, we kind of knew like this girl's here. She's the visual of this group. She'll probably be an actress when this is all said and done. Mm. I think we all kind of figured yeah. that. Um, mm. Yep. Yep. Okay, next one. Uh, Agnes Chan Hyuk, right? Chan Hyuk, we covered his song, yeah. Panorama. Yeah. <laughs> There's dating rumors with From Miss Nine Serum. Oh. YG stated it's difficult to confirm as it involves the artist's private life. So they basically said, butt off. Don't, don't ask. <laughs> None of our business. Traditional was, YG taste. <laughs> and there was no denial, though. So I have no clue if this is true or not. But yeah, apparently it might be. Well, good for them if it's true. Yeah, good for them if it's true. I'm, wow. I'm I'm trying to look it up because someone deleted the initial tweet, but no, no, there's still stuff around here. So yeah, yeah, I, I have no clue. Um, all right, finally, this is still developing, but I wanted to talk about it, right? So there is a group called Omega X, right? Um, essentially. There are there's a video that SBS released and there were rumors and there were people were talking about that their CEO or, or someone from their staff was verbally abusing the artist while they were on their tour of the United States and South America, I believe, or North America, South America, something like that. And there was video of them in Los Angeles where someone was screaming at one of the members. He was having essentially a panic attack and they like physically hit him or something. So so that happened and uh, okay before it's too late trigger warning for folks who are not familiar oh, yeah, yeah for for um, those who might not be familiar with sorry comfortable with violence and whatnot There's another aspect of this where their flights back to Korea have gotten kind of messed up because the what they're saying is that we made there was some kind of mistake and if we had taken this flight all of the the artists would have had to sit next to people not related to the company and there could have been like a weird fan mom thing, you know, where they're sitting next to the yeah. a fan for oh, 16 okay. hours and yeah. it's weird, right? So, mm -hmm. but the terrible thing is it seems that most of the staff flew back to Korea, but all of the members of Omega X are still stuck in Korea. I mean, still stuck in LA. By themselves? Mm -hmm. By the, I don't know with who, but all of the members and they said most of the staff and the CEO left, went back to Korea. Oh, wait, what? And people think they did this so that the kids can't talk to the media. That sounds... But don't they have social media? I don't know. They're probably not allowed to. Um, That being said, their company, Spire Entertainment, released the most BS statement I've ever seen. They were like, we, we had an open conversation about, um, like how we were doing and it got heated and that's what happened even though there's a video of this woman what? just screaming at these kids and then additionally sbs stated that they contacted the ceo and she was like no one has treats their kids better than me who released this video i want to prosecute them yada 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 what um I mean, she's in the video. Like, how? Can she's, she yeah, there's this lady in this video just screaming at them. This is a bit of a, yeah. you know, I, I'm seeing a field, uh, like a very big field of lots of red flags. Um, yes, there's so yes. many red flags. Yes. Um, it feels like someone has apparently never left the '90s. You know, this was, I guess, a little more common in the industry during the '90s. Um, mm. ba bad retro. Don't do. 
this kind of retro, please. Not good retro. No, no. this is the wrong kind of throwback. We left the '90s and bad artist treatment for a good flipping reason. Yeah, I don't <sighs> treat them like human beings, please. I and and the, the most ridiculous thing is there are reports in various stops of this tour where people saw someone staff member they see, keep saying this the same they saw the same woman yelling at the kids at all of these different stops of this tour like chile i heard in la i heard i, I think i heard somewhere in canada as well like what I, multiple accounts yeah Dang. yeah Here, here's the thing I, i'm gonna have to go and watch the actual video but like the moment a literal sbs news outlet is involved and in revealing yeah. all these videos yeah um it I mean, kind of reminds me of the situation with the East Light back in the day where they god. were Oh my god, yeah. That was by someone at their company. Yeah. Sorry, they were what by the someone at their company? The East Light? They they got physically assaulted yeah. by someone in their company, I believe. Um But this Omega X situation, it's still developing, but the fact that major news pe- sources like SBS is dropping the video means it's a serious it's a big deal. Um yeah, and their 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 statement they publicly released was like, yeah, we patched everything up. We were talking. We it was a deeply meaningful time for us to tour, and it's like mm. we're sad. We're 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 sorry that everyone saw us in a bad light, but you know, we just really got worked up because we care a lot about what's going on, essentially. Well, I would like to hear Omega X say something along those lines as well. Exactly. Yeah, because you know sometimes Doug and I will have heated conversations. And it ends with me saying, Doug, I love you with the deepest bottom of my heart. I haven't heard that from Omega X yet, you know? Yeah, it's it seems like yeah. a, t- a terrible situation. Um, Very one-sided. Yeah, I'm like... like full story. Yeah, like, the, the company coming out to say, Oh, it's 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 okay, guys. Everybody, it's... We're in, we're in a field of happy flowers and rainbows. Sure, whatever the F. Let me oh talk my, to the other they, guy as well. They dropped the video on the official SBS yeah. News YouTube page that has 3 million subscribers. Yep. Yep. This Big is the deal. real cha- yeah, yeah. channel. And there's, you know, I'm hoping there will be English subtitles at some point. There is an official English comment. Sorry. Uh, closed captions. You should look at it because I can't look yeah. at it right now, but it looks like, very serious. Like one member seemed to be having like a panic attack and then the staff were like, stand him up. Stand them up, yada yada yada, and it's like it's horrifying, in my opinion. The, um, the thing is, the concept yeah. of a panic attack is not very widely understood in Korea for various reasons. Um, but I mean, you're working in K-pop, y'all should know better. There's like, there's gaslighting too. She's like, for once, did you take care of me when I was having a hard time? Yada yada. Why yada, would yada. the <laughs> artist take care <laughs> of you? Heck? Yeah, yeah, that's like what the staff was saying. I don't know if it was the CEO or the staff, but that's what the person yelling said to them. You know Even what? though the kid is like on the floor having a panic attack. You know what that's like? That's like that's like op- that's that's like Biden coming to me. He's like he calls me on my personal <laughs> phone. He's like, Warren, I'm having a bad day. Can you tell me it's okay? I'm like, oh, why? And he goes, I'm your president. I protect you every day. Why can't you say anything nice to me? And I'm like, you I don't know you. You know what? And then um, in the video, there's also like physical thing too. She like someone grabbed his collar and threw him to the ground type deal too. Like it's a big mess. What? Come on, come on. This is stupid. Yeah, there's. They, yep. Yeah. SPS said it is the CEO of the company. Oh Jesus Christ! Look, yeah. This, let's. I don't can imagine that it will end well. Yeah, let's let's see this develop. Let's see this develop a little bit because the SPS video came up literally uh, this morning American time. Um, mm. So. I'm I'm sure there's more stuff in the works behind the scenes here. What I will say is that this is one of those situations where it feels very difficult to recover from in the point of view of Omega X's company cuz very rare this is like unacceptable. I don't know. Like people were saying it reminded them of Nut Rage back in the day. Where uh, the 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 Korea Air oh, lady had the freak lady. out over the nuts on the airplane, people were saying that this reminds them of that, like where there's just this video of someone acting a fool in public. The know? nut rage, aka the nut gate, aka the nut return flight, yeah, is uh, yeah. was a situation <laughs> where the Korean Air vice president was on a Korean Air flight, and she was this she was very unhappy with the way nuts were served on her plane. So they ordered the aircraft back on the ground after it took off. 
which is illegal. It's crazy, crazy stuff. That yeah. that career, that Korea Air family is like they could make a drama out of it because I heard after the the father died, they like split up into two teams and that hate each other and they throw chairs at each other in meetings and things like that. Is Goodness the rumor? Gracious. Yeah, like because they, they like. Basically, the family tried to consolidate power after the the, yeah. the father died in the family. And so I understand. It's very messy. I understand like K dramas and movies will like romanticize triples as these like knights with lots of money. Um, very rarely is that the case. I feel like when you see stuff like this, mm-hmm. just happen all the time. Not saying Kang Song Hee, CEO of Omega X's company. I'm not saying she's triple. Just just you know, I don't know what Spire's like. I don't know what Danel is like. I don't know what any of these companies are like. I don't know what Kang Sung-hee is like, apparently. Um, but apparently, she's not even the CEO. Apparently, she's the CEO's wife, so I don't know what her official position oh, is. Oh, Jesus. Okay. What is, what is she doing for the company? What? Is, 15 people in their company. That's what this company is. It's essentially a small startup. So, what, so we will have to see. What, are, what um, is the name of her position? What is her thing on LinkedIn? What, does she have a LinkedIn? I, pro- I bet she probably, she probably doesn't. She's not she's really <laughs> weird. This is stupid. I'm having a field day right now. This is stupid. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, next next week, though, I don't think, I think this one already happened. Um, the ATBO, Classy, Epics, NCT10, a group called TFN, Alice, which is that Elris, uh redo, right? Oh, okay. they're, they're, they're having right. their song release. Mm-hmm. BTS Jin is the big one. That's on Friday. And then Monday, we have Exos, Chen, and Unite. The Jin one is like space-themed, I Ooh. believe. I think it's like Astronaut Ooh. or something like that. Yeah, it's called... It's a, the Astronaut solo single with Outlander concept photo. So it's called The Astronaut, I believe. So that right. should be pretty cool. And people think it is a collaboration with Coldplay, but I don't think anything has been definitively confirmed. Oh, actually, Astronaut co-written by Jin and Coldplay. Yep, okay. so that is happening. All right, uh, this is the end of part two. So, you talk episode 209. After the break, we will come back and react to the Mama Award nominees and make some choices as to who we think should win. All right, see you guys then, everyone. Bye. 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 Special shout outs to our Fiesta patrons Bagel, Based Mina, Brian, Chano. Cotton Ball, Delmonic, Ellie, Genki Boy, Goku Mama, Jacob, Liam's Games and Toys, Luke Daniel, NJ Parks, Tear. Thank you for joining Social Talk. And special thanks to our Discord server mod. Jacob, K Music Erde, Koala, Max, No Bias Luna, Tuggles, and Wolf297. All right, we're now at After Hours, aka State of the Nation, open discussion. Um, we're going to talk about the 2022 Mama Awards and the nominees, but before we do that, we need to say th- say some things. The first one, clarification. With the Omega X thing, it is the CEO's wife, apparently. Warren looked it up on multiple places. Not the CEO himself, so that's a thing. Uh, number two, Warren wants to tease a future event that we might be doing or future segments. All right. Now that we're doing actual end-of-the-year stuff with Mama now, I think it's like a safe time to like start telling teasing spoiling people about what's happening um so um one thing that's gonna happen like i think next week ish or so we're gonna start getting submissions for the girl group tier list that we talked about a while back um i will we will talk about the details later but if you want to be a part of that conversation our discord link is in youtube it's in our Instagram bio, just, you'll you'll find it. DM me if you can't find it. I'll personally send you a personal link and send you a thank you note as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you'll it, yeah, it, just just join the Discord early if you're interested. But if not, you can join next week. Um, but we'll have something about a girl group tier list at that point. The other stuff is last year, also on the Discord. Last year we had a big series of World Cups at the end of the year. 
to pick mm-hmm. the favorite song mm-hmm. of the year. We're gonna do that again, but it's gonna we're we're trying to expand it a little bit so that it's there's more going on. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. It's just happening. It is it is what it is. Um, so that might be happening along with a couple other stuff. So again, um. If you want to stay up to date with all that stuff and, and be a part of the conversation there or just Discord. vote, you know, go join the Discord. Mm. I heard from a couple of folks when we did the poll earlier in the year that they, they it, they're they're a little shy because, you know, it, it feels like Discord has already established folks who like to, you know, be friends with each other. We're, I feel like generally we're a very welcoming com- uh, group of pe- uh, community and a group of people. So come check us out. Mm-hmm. We're, I think we're... They're, generally welcoming kids a lot of these kids i've talked with a lot and they're they're nice Something folks. for everyone yeah mm. we've unless you're a troll don't then we will ban you okay no yeah don't that. don't do that no, bad, all bad right people yeah mama. let's move on let's talk so about mama, mama we're gonna talk about some category we're gonna talk about the categories that are like relevant the ones we basically cover in our award show that we do every year so we're gonna do female and male rookie of the year we'll do female and male artists of so the best solo artists female and male best group and then we'll probably skip a bunch of the ones in the middle, like performance, OST, hip hop, and we'll do song of the year and we'll do artist of the year. So let's start at the top with the best uh, new female artist. From what I understand also is if you are nominated for the rookie categories, you cannot be nominated for best group. Oh, what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. That's how they do it at Mama. So we're going to the first one, best new female artist. The nominees are Ive, Kepler, La Seraphim, New Jeans, and Mix, and Yena. I think there are clearly three people that need to be debated. The rest of them probably not. Ive, La Seraphim, and New Jeans. Yes. I would agree with that. Okay, I would say one is not like the others in that. Okay, three. Ive versus New Jeans. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Fair. I, I would personally say La Seraphim, I like Antifragile. I liked mm. Fearless. But it was a bit of a mixed reception with some of the folks out there. Um, so I think yeah. with 2022, um, the way they do this voting and the time constraints, I think you have to pick Ive because although Les- New Jeans had that fire like month of tracks, it's all technically one big re- like debut period, right? We didn't get two. We didn't get two periods, right? Yeah, Whereas true. Ive this year we've had two, and they've both been kind of big after like in Love Dive. I think um, I, I think if you look at the actual release dates we're looking at, it kind of includes their debut as well because didn't it drop in I think December? So, yeah, yeah, in December. Okay, yeah, so it covers all of the I stuff yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah, and and it's given a stronger point, I think. Oh yeah, mm. and given how wildly successful their second and third track has been, I would probably give it to I. So New Jeans is coming back in like November or December, something like that. If Ooh. if that was earlier. Then I think you would have a if that was in this voting period, you'd have a strong argument, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think the New Jeans phenomenon was gigantic. But that being said, with the amount of releases they have versus each other, I know New Jeans had a bunch of them, but I really think New Jeans really comes down to attention and hype boy, and you're versing it against Love Dive, um, After Like and Eleven. I'm leaning more Box. towards Ive. Yeah. Me too. Same. Ive. Ive, Ive, Ive. It's pretty much those three versus um, attention because attention was the one that popped off the most in Korea. So mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah, I'd be I'd be safe giving it to Ive. Yeah, and regardless how, of how you feel, the New Jeans debut did come with a lot of additional controversies. Um, that you know, not the best way to start off yeah, your career. Okay, uh, let's move to the next category. So it is best new male artist. Okay. So, one of you want to read the nominees? Anita. Okay. Anita, go. I think it's AT, ATBO. Am I reading it right? Mm-hmm. Tempest, TNX, Extinary Heroes, and Unite. Okay. Um, hmm. um, I'm going to be real. I've only listened to Tempest here. No, no, no. Okay. I don't know the metric off the top of my head, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if I remember correctly from reading it somewhere, Tempest is the most successful recent debuted boy group. I, that kind of sounds that about right. Tricks out, yeah. I don't know the exact numbers. I saw someone post it on the Discord today, so I'm kind of trying to find it. But at the same time, it's not coming up because the Discord search algorithm sometimes is ass. 
you know yeah. um <laughs> but at the same time i think like the only other one that i've heard of to a big extent is extinary heroes but at the same mm-hmm. time i it's like I, I don't think they've done enough yet like you know how day six all of a sudden popped up as a band from jyp it took a bit of time mm-hmm. so i think it's mm-hmm. the same thing is going to happen with extinary hero so i gotta give it to tempest I think a lot of the conversation yeah. happening around Dexterity Heroes is a little uh, mixed. Oh, I found it. I found the yeah. statistic. Yeah. Uh, Biff wrote, no boy group that debuted since in Hypen has sold more than 100k for one album, but Tempest is the closest at 97k. Okay. okay. Well, you know. That's yeah, that's a very clear, stark difference, you know. Yeah, this is kind of like I wouldn't call it a weak class, but it's it's kind of weak. <laughs> you, you wouldn't, but you did. I did because okay. Exodary Heroes only sold sixty k of their highest selling one. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Tempest. I think you have to. Tempest. Yeah, Yeva and Tempest, right? Yeah, I would go I with Tempest TNX. as well. TNX is pretty cool, but yeah, Tempest. I, I I'm gonna go ahead and check out the other releases uh, releases as well. Given I don't, I'm not very familiar with the discography, but hmm. so far, yeah. All right, next one we're going to talk about real quick is Best Female Artist. So that is pretty much uh, uh, for pretty much female soloists is the award. So Warren, who are the nominees? Yep, we have five artists for Best Female Artist. We have IU, Mian of G Idol, Nayeon of Twice, Silgi of Red Velvet, and Taeyeon of SNSD. Okay, I feel like I don't think IU did enough in this calendar year. <laughs> Or in the, the the voting period, I know she's IU and she's great, right? But mm-hmm. I don't think she had any major releases during the the time period. She she had a she had an EP at the end of the last year, if I remember correctly. I think it was called. I forget the English title. Really? Yeah. Huh. We didn't cover like it on it, the show. I feel like it didn't pop off too much, right? I don't I, know. I didn't hear about it everywhere. I think it was meant to be like a minor release, if that means anything. Okay. Yeah. Um. So that. So I think yeah I would I would agree with you process of elimination I would probably eliminate Ayu here uh, she had a great last year I really feel like yeah. it comes down to Nyon Pop Sugi Twenty Eight Reasons versus Taeyeon INVU Oof. I think it's right? actually Taeyeon Nyon Taeyeon and Nyon you would say so Two Pop eight. versus INVU Kinda, yeah. Honestly, I've been leading towards that direction too, Anita. <laughs> I mean, it has, just hasn't been that long for Silgi, I think. Well, I think, oh. yeah, I think Silgi's, Silgi's debut was great. Um, I, mm-hmm. I NVU and Pop did very different things, but they were both very successful, yeah. right? Um, they yeah. Ooh. Oh, this is a tough call. Mm. You know what? You know what? It comes down to personal favorites. I would pick. Pop over INVU between these two. I'm so biased. I don't want to vote because I want to vote for Tan because I'm a huge Tan fan at the moment. I feel like the song did really well though, didn't it? No, yeah. it did well. It did very well. Yeah, both of them were both of them were very popular. Hmm. I N V U bam. Which... I don't know because I'm so biased. So I hear her sing I N V U like every week when she's on Doremi Market. She references it all the oh. time. <laughs> oh god. Whenever Taeyeon does something cool or gets an answer right, they play it. Essentially, you know how people have like theme I songs see. on shows. Mm-hmm. But I think Pop was bigger. I think I'm gonna give it the Pop. Should Is you go it with Pop? I I think here's the thing, right? Pop was definitely bigger in the American sphere, I in view is definitely bigger in the domestic sphere. That's how I that's the takeaway oh. with me, you know? Yeah, let me let me look at some charting. I in view when number one in Korea, right? Uh let me look up pop. Here. While he's looking this up, Anita, pick between the two. Between the Nayon and Taeyeon. Uh, we can't just keep num- dragging the stone forever. Come on. Pop one I'm number two. With- so I'm gonna go with Taeyeon. Taeyeon? Well, it comes down to Doug then, apparently. I'm going to give it... Okay, let me look at some album sales here, right? Yeah. Nyan, half a <laughs> milli. Six. I envy you, 250k. I'm going to give it to Nyan. I think it had more of a splash. Okay. I think at the end of the day, I would be very happy with either one of the Nyan and mm-hmm. Taeyeon. There's a lot of Yuns this year, apparently. Mi Yun's also a Yun. Mi Yun, Nyan, oh, Taeyeon, okay. Yun, Yun, Yun. Um... <laughs> I would I would be very happy with either one of Nyan or Taeyeon, I'll be honest. 
even though I chose oh. Nyan over Taeyeon. All right, let's go to male artist, best male artist. Best male artist. Nominees are J-Hope, Kang Daniel, Im Young-un, Sai, and Zico. Ooh. 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 You can't Ooh. you can't ignore the middle league Zajuma's favorite man. <laughs> okay, the J Hope thing was huge, right? That was the big, yeah. Music video more got fifty seven million views. Arson got thirty five. He did quite a bit, yeah. Featuring... Oh. It's gonna come down. I don't think I think Im Young Woo had had a didn't he all kill a bunch of crap too, I think, right? Dude, I don't follow <gasps> his music. He's popping off this year, yeah. He's oh always my. been popping off. You know what? No, he pops up every year. I don't... <laughs> uh, this is a, this is a, such a tough category, right? Uh, dude, I really need to listen to It's a three-way for me, I think. Okay, which three? Jeho, Zico, Im young -un. Zico! Interesting. I think he did some things to be up there. Maybe more too then. Yeah, me. no, he he's the one with the most activity this year because he his mm. his single for Street Man Fighter popped off like crazy, right? Z oh, uh, right, Zipping, you're right? right. Yes, right. And then the EP came before that with um, was it an EP? I think it was an EP, right? Let me look this up real quick. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the I don't remember the name, but I remember the music video. Yeah, yeah, the one with the freak and all that stuff. Yes, and yes, yes. I don't think that was wildly popular, but it did decently well, you know. I'm giving it to. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, I, yeah. I I would be happy with either one of Imyongu or Zico or J Hope as well, actually. So you you don't we're not gonna give it to that that right No, right? I wouldn't. I don't, I don't think I can. It it I, was very domestically very I, popular. I, I think it's gonna come down to J Hope or Imyongu. It depends on how Korean domestic they care because Arson and more from J Hope didn't actually chart very well in Korea. Oh. Whereas Im Young-woo obviously charted well, but J-Hope sold obviously a crap ton of it and it was worldwide more popular. So it's going to come down to how how they actually interpret that. I think I'm going to give it to J-Hope because I think Im Young-woo has won it already. So I'm going to give it to J-Hope. Spread the love. Mm. I'm going to give it to J-Hope. I think J-Hope deserves it. Let's see what happens. It's, this is going to be an issue when we're doing end of the year shows, by the way. For sure. <laughs> Dude, I'm struggling. All right, already. let's go to best female group. Best female group. All right. Um, I, Anita, I think you're reading these, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yes. G Idol, Espa, Blackpink, Itzy, Red Velvet, and Twice. Oh, my God. Ooh. <laughs> big names. Big, big names. Um, okay. 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 Process of elimination. I think you eliminate um, Itzy. I, I think this <laughs> this year, okay. Which which Espa songs does this incorporate? Right, that's what this girls. really comes down to. Is it just girls? And oh, no. well, they had two singles leading up to it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, but it's not next they level. Did. Wait, once the voting cut, it's late October, right? Okay, yeah. Savage was October fifth, so it's not Savage. Savage doesn't okay. count. Yeah. So I I think it comes down to for me, G Idol or Blackpink. G Idol, then I think maybe. No, I think we gave it to Blackpink. No? Blackpink, okay. Again, I well, think I I'd be was thinking. Mm. Oh no! Yeah, keep going. No, no, I guess I was thinking as far as like song, like releases and like trending and mm -hmm. how how popular I see them with general public in like references, right? I guess maybe I saw G Idol more, but I I do think Blackpink had a. Uh, how, how do you say it? Like a on year. Mm. This was one of the years when Blackpink had a song. You know, um, <laughs> that's not every year. Oh. <laughs> the, here's the thing. I, I, I would probably cho choose between those two as well, right? G Idol and Blackpink mm. both had very very strong years. G Idol was very popular with the domestic general public. Right. Blackpink had more of a fandom success you know f expanding into their success success in the west um which a lot of that did show up in the domestic sphere as well and if i think about it remember a couple years ago the question was, was always twice versus red velvet versus black pink black pink is running the longest at the moment between the three if you, if you think about it you know that's true yeah in my opinion yes yeah 
I think the real argument should be G Idol versus Blackpink versus Ive, but Ive can't be in this category. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Realistically, I would replace. So, you, you come to G Idol or Blackpink, are you going to give it to G Idol, whose both songs went number one, and I think both songs, Perfect All Killed, versus Blackpink, who did chart extremely well, but they were gatekept by the Ive songs, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Essentially. Yeah. I still think, based on just the, the success in general, I would give it to Blackpink, but I could 100% see the argument for G Idol, depending mm -hmm. on how you vote. Well, right? we shall see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Best um, male, male group. Art. All right. We have six artists for best male group. We have BTS and Hypen, NCT Dream, Seventeen, Stray Kids, and Tomorrow by Together. TXT. I'm going to be honest here. I'm not 100% sure who you would vote for here. What? I, I mean, know. one group that is like salient right now, maybe because I feel like they've had a couple of really like popular releases was Stray Kids. I feel like they had a lot of really like popular releases in music shows at least. Yeah, weren't we weren't we very surprised with the Stray Kids sales a couple weeks ago? Yes, yeah. we were. Oh yes, sure. the sales yeah. were really really good. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be angry with the Stray Kids win. I would be kind of pretty surprised with a Tomorrow by Together win, to be honest. They had Surprise? one yeah, they had an mm. EP this year. Um, that was I, I think it was all right. But if I think of TXT, they had a great 2021, and this year felt like a more like a break year. Although I'm sure they were very very busy, um, mm. to a degree where you know, uh, I'm still looking forward to their next year. But it feels like it feels a little awkward to give a male group of the year in that aspect. I um, I also think a sleeper might be 17 as well. Yeah. Same oh, thoughts true. there. They had a lot of yeah, yeah. I think it could be any of the three. What did NCT Dream? How many songs did they release in this span? Don't they only do one EP? Oh. I gotta look it up. See, this is the problem. They did beatbox? That was boom, one. Chicka, boom, chicka, boom, 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 two baddies. No, that's, that's NCT One Two Seven. That's One Two Seven. Where's Where's yeah. Where's Dream Dream it's Dream? Okay, here we beatbox go. Beatbox and glitch mode. Beatbox glitch mode. Yes. Yeah. Which is one EP. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, I NCT Dream had an EP, seventeen had a full length album. Um two comebacks, three comebacks, that's that's one thing to think about when you're thinking about who to choose from, I think. It's not the year to give it to BTS, right? Although they are very significant as always. They be they they were to. they were yet to they released yet to come, right? I think that's yeah. the only thing that would cover in this period, I believe. Mm. Other than the collab with the with Coldplay, but I really wouldn't consider that their title track. Um, I think there's a lot of symbolism that they would hold by giving by getting best male group. So I, I honestly, honestly, very honestly. I wouldn't be angry happen. with a BTS win. I honestly wouldn't mm. be. Yeah. Cause I feel like it's going to come to Stray Kids or 17 or TXT, though. I have a feeling. How how TXT? They didn't really do much this year. Let me look this up. I might be wrong. I, remember, <laughs> they did one EP this year, which was... Okay, never mind. Never yeah, mind. Not never as mind. popular I'm as I'm their wrong. first other two releases that came before it. We w we shall see when it comes to the actual awards. Let's no, 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 no. Wait, wait. I'm not done. I'm not done talking about it. Oh. Seven, the 17 or T or 17 or Stray Kids, who would you give it to? Here's the thing. I, I, I want to avoid picking one group from every category right now because we have our own awards show at the end of the year and feel like well, we're true. spoiling that a little bit. Yeah, but we work on a calendar year, not October. True, but like, I mean, like, it's not too far off in it. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I mean, you can say it if you want. I'm not going to. Are you leaning one particular way? 17, 17. 17? Oh. Okay. okay. What was the other category? I lost the... the yeah, you, the you're in charge of the list. I can't find it. And my... Oh, my God. Bro, the thing <laughs> with Google Chrome that infuriates me to yeah. no end now is if you're in... Not Chrome. If you're in Google Docs and you do Control H to find history, right? Yeah. In your Google browser, it doesn't bring up your Google history. It does find and replace in the Google Doc. Oh, what? Yeah, it's super annoying. Oh, should I actually script? Oh, flash dark script. <laughs> it's fine. That's fine. 
then why why not? Well, that's okay. I mean, I understand why they did it, but that's still stupid. Right, I gotta find it, Mama. Twenty. I gotta now just Google it. All right, here it is. Pretty okay. sure he has something. Like I think it, we're just in Song of the Year now. We're in Song of the Year. Song of the Year. Yeah. Song of the Year, Doug. Read our. Wow, we have a lot. Of I'm not reading them all. I'm not reading wow. them all. Okay. <laughs> it it just comes down. Peak. It comes down to like a handful, like maybe five songs, right? The ones are the ones that I can remember off the top of my head. Black Sabbath are here. Love Dive, right? Is on that yeah. list. G Idol Tomboy. Okay. I would say side that that Nyan Pop, and. That's maybe Pink Venom, right? I think that's what it comes down to. Pink Venom is indeed can confirm it is on the chart. Yeah, it would. If for me, it would come down to Pink Venom, that that maybe Love Dive, Tomboy, whatever. But I think the is is New Jeans. Uh, New Jeans is not in this. Oh, no, attention! Oh, it attention! Is. It's gonna come down to attention, Tomboy, and Love Dive. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oof. yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? It has yep. to come down to one of those three, yep. I think. Yep. Though I think those three, I could see an argument for pop and INVU because though well actually not pop, maybe INVU because that was also very popular in the charts. Um maybe Im Young Woon because that was also very popular. No, no, we're not, <laughs> we're not going down that path. <laughs> but I think it really comes down to one of those three songs. Do you or, like a, do you, do you give it to attention because of how big that debut was? Or do you give it to Love Dive? Or Tomboy because of just how long they charted. And I think in my head, oh, yeah. I would probably give it to Love Dive. Even though I Ooh. don't think it's the best song out of those three, I think because of chart longevity, I would give it to them. I, I can see that as well. Um, I wouldn't be angry with any of the releases you mentioned. Um, yeah. Even though we were very not happy with Tomboy, or I wasn't very happy with yeah. Tomboy. It was wildly popular. Um, and I feel like that says a lot. Um Two things. I here's the thing. I would. I would be. I wouldn't be surprised with a still life win, and I really? by Big Bang. Yeah, and mm. I wouldn't be surprised with the Counting Stars by Bo win either. Given how oh that one was big. Right. Mm. Those two songs are also very popular. Um, Counting Stars is leaning a little farther into last year more than this year, so I think that's why people yeah. sometimes forget about it. But Black Skirts is on here. My Little Lambs is great. That's not gonna win, but it's a great song. <laughs> Onestein's in here too. <laughs> Wait, who's in here? Oh, he is. Onestein. Onestein, really? Go down, purple, the purple. Oh, one. yeah, for the twenty-five, twenty-one. Hey, Wu and Minoy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Oh my god. All right, so that's the song of the year. I really think it comes down to one of those three songs. Pick your poison. Yeah. Um. No, it's gonna be and... Zoom by Jesse. <laughs> oh my god, zoom in, <laughs> zoom out, zoom out. Zoom out. So we got artists of the year. Pretty much everyone is on that list. Um. We're not reading this. Very long list. So, if there was ever a calendar period of BTS not to win it, it's probably this year. Right? I would say. Mm. Yeah. I I think if you are going to reward global success, then this is Blackpink's year to win it. Right? Mm -hmm. If we're going to award charting Domestic? success, oh, charting. I would do the crazy thing and give it to Ive. Oh. 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 And I would potentially maybe consider. Okay, I'm looking at this. It's weird how they have NCT Dream as the only NCT cult like thing in here. I believe. Yeah. That's true. That's kind of weird. Even I really the, like the in the bottom of my heart. I think it comes down in this this calendar year. It also depends on how well Nude keeps performing, right? Mm. Because Nude is oh, all yeah. kill at the moment. If it retains number one till the time of this award show, I know that. So nude basically has about 10 days for it to get into people's minds who are voting for this, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know when the voting for the actual committee and the other ways they vote end, but if this nude thing also maintains number one, they have as much of an argument as Ive does because they have two songs then, right? Yeah. 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 They're the two groups. So I think it either comes down to, do you give it to Blackpink because of the commercial su success they've had in 2022 or do you reward G Idol and I for having exemplary streaming years or charting years? Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a difficult argument to make between G Idol and I've personally, I find it that way because G Idol is coming off of what 
was a very serious bullying scandal and a very serious hit to their public Remember. image, right? Yeah. Um, and they somehow ended up coming back with some of the most riskiest and yet wildly popular songs. Like that's that's incredible. That's wild. I've comes off the back of a debut. <laughs> they came brand they new, did, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, they, some people, they're you know, some people knew some of the folks on the group, but like you can't forget the but, fact no. that this is mm-hmm. a debut, right? Um, yeah. So I think those both of those songs, sorry, both of those groups are wildly commendable. Um, Blackpink, I agree with you. Very strong year this year, especially in the West. Uh... The, 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 the craziest yeah. thing about Ive is they've released like three songs, but I would already consider them upper echelon girl group, like top tier. Would you not at this point? Yeah. I would yeah, consider I would. the craziest thing is we are now in an era that your top tier status is not based on career history. Like, what have you done in your career? It is based on the here and now. What have you done for me in the last 12 months? Right? It's, it's, I feel like it's kind of like 2016 all over again, where like already we were putting, putting like twice in red velvet and black pink and S tier. If you had to ask uh, me now, mm-hmm. who do you consider the most viral, most popular girl groups at the moment who are getting the most traction? I would say Blackpink, Ive, G Idol, and New Jeans are the top tier. Yep. At the moment. Yep. Two of them rookies. I would say yeah. those four groups are the majority of what was talked about this year. Mm-hmm. And I would throw in Nyan in terms of what was viral in terms of a soloist. But like that's like the upper echelon stuff at the moment. I, I might groups. throw I might throw in like Espa. Given like they were still very yeah, wildly relevant. If Rick. Espa could have followed up their tremendous 2021 with an even better 2022, they would be at the top with Blackpink, I think. Yeah. Well, but in in this year, man, it, I think I'm so curious as to how they're going to give that out. What they actually want to award. If they want to be safe about it, I would give it to Blackpink though. This year. Yeah, longevity. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets a Blackpink win. If they want to be safe, they give it to BTS or Blackpink. If they want to stir some waves, you give it to Ive. And the, watch the K-pop world explode. I, you know, the Western sphere, I think, would explode even further with G-Idol win, given like that was more popular oh, in the domestic sphere. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, because I feel like Ive, everyone recognizes how big that is, but G-Idol still feels a little niche. If they give it to G-Idol, oh my God, the casuals would explode on the internet, right? <laughs> but I mean... It'll be a very deserving win. Um, oh, I would right. love to... S- I really want g Idol or I have to win it. Oh my god, it would make my year. <laughs> Real quick, remember how earlier you mentioned you were like not sure why only NCT Dream is on here? Yeah. I have like a semi-conspiracy theory as to why okay. that may be okay. the case. Okay. Right? Give us the theory. Okay. Give us the theory. Hat. Right? Mama goes, all right, we got to get some of the NCT folks on here, right? Mm-hmm. SM goes, can you only do one group so that we can you know, focus on the voting a little bit. Because, uh, right? Because if NCT 127, NCT Dream, Wavy, and all of NCT is on the, group, on, on the, on the you know, option list, they got to pick divided, out. Of, yeah. Right. The vote, fan votes are being split four ways. Y'all don't want that. So well, that's... That makes sense. That makes sense. Right. That's the way I think... That's way... Yeah, that's why I think they focused on one. Um, they could have done just NCT. That would have been all encompassing. But I think if they had done just NCT, there would be a decent argument for them to win more awards. You know, that at that point it feels like it's cheating a little bit. Maybe I don't know. And can they can they please give it to Ive? Oh my god, it'd be hilarious. They did real quick. Did and Mix only have seven people? Yeah. Oh, I thought they had more for some reason. No, that's all they got. There's oh. Kujin, Bay, um, Lily, um, wow. Uh, I, I'm forgetting the rest of their you names. You forgot their names. How wow, hey one, terrible. Hey one, hey one. Yes. Uh-huh, There's uh-huh. the rapper girl, the shug shug girl, Ginny. Jet's her name, Ginny. <laughs> yes. There's one more girl who I always forget. Uh, she's in the top left of that photo. <laughs> yeah, there's Bay. Bay Kujin. Uh, there's there's Kujin, Big Wave herself. Big Wave. Hey one, Big Wave. Ginny. Hey one, hey so, Soliun, so Lily, yeah. and who's the one on the top left? Lily. Oh my goodness. Um, and mix members. I feel terrible that I'm forgetting. Jiwoo. <laughs> uh, uh, Jiwoo. Yeah, no, that's Jiwoo. her name. Yeah. Oh, I always forget her. Yeah, sorry. Hey, I'm learning though. I have been learning these girl that's group names good. lately. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's not bad. Yeah. 
Um, we're 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 Soldier Talk official K-pop podcast. We know this, every members of every year, group. This year, though, like for the theme, the girl groups have been coming hard this year. Oh, yo. we've yeah. been talking about this. Mm-hmm. Almost all the notable singles have been by girl groups. Yeah. Yep. yep. Their dom- their chart dominance. They might not be as selling as much as the guys, but the chart dominance is very is more apparent than it's ever been. And I think a lot of it rests in the fact that the rookie class in the last two years has been so strong for the girl groups. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Because uh, that statistic that no one has sold 100K since in Hypen, right? That's actually kind of crazy because in Hypen debuted in 2020, right? Um, mm. In November 2020. So in, in since then... Not too much in it's terms of girl minute. group. That's a lot. In wild. terms of guy group rookies. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But the girl group rookies have been coming like monsters, you know? Um, so that's well, yeah, an interesting thing. Who knows? Maybe next year will be the year of boy groups. We'll see. It might be, uh, but we're also getting female island apparently. So. Oh, that. that's mm. happening. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. I think that is it. Um. Mm-hmm. We're good, guys? Yeah. We're good. We're good. All right. Cool. I guess we could end the show now. We'll see you guys next time, everyone. (laughs) That was a very quick ending. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.